Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday, the 1st of December. I hope that you are prepared to have a good day and I hope, I pray that this is a day where God really calls you to think and to consider and to reason. I want to talk a little bit today about art predicting reality. In particular, I would like to talk about a program that I absolutely love called Madam Secretary. And here's a picture. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the glare of the TV, the glare of the screen. But there's Madam Secretary, Tia Leona, Leone. She's a, an actress, and for six years she played the part of, of Elizabeth McCord, who was the Secretary of State for the United States in a program on on CBS called Madam Secretary. It was an absolutely incredible show and I don't mind giving it a plug because it is a thinking person show and really it shows a woman, um, of edu- an educated woman who is willing to take on on the, the role of, of being a watchkeeper and a, an advocate for the world in uh, in a really a man's game in uh, in Washington. And it's a pretty incredible program and it's my it's my not so guilty delight. It's, I've got all of the seasons downloaded on my iPad, so I'm quite often kicked back in my chair with my earphones. I'm watching another episode. The episode I watched last night um, was an episode about a fictional island called Nauru um, in the Pacific, and uh, they're talking about climate change and typhoons. And this was an island that was inhabited for three thousand years with people, and they had their holy sites. And it was built on coral, and um, unfortunately, it was soft coral. And they, uh, uh, this this typhoon of the century came through, and and killed many of the people and left the, a lot of them in precarious position. And four days later, another um, storm was coming through. That was another storm of the century, happening in less than a week. Which at the end of the program, they show a picture of where Nauru, that looks like just the ocean. Everybody asks, well, where is it? And that's it. The water rose so high and the pressure was so great it broke the coral and the, the the island sank into the water. Thank God most of the inhabitants had been saved by um, U.S. troop ships, of course, um, but because uh, that's the hero of the story, um, and were being relocated someplace else because of people willing to work together to find another island that they could inhabit. It's all fiction, of course. But the idea that we could lose islands, we could lose parts of our coastlands, that, that, that climate change is real, that's not fiction. We have a lot of people who are still skeptical about the science of, of, of climate, climate change and um, global warming and all of these things. And um, I'm, you know, whether we like to believe it or not, we are facing the situation. Cape Breton was hit by a massive storm that knocked out parts of parts of the parts of the Cabot Trail. Um, but it's one of the most picturesque and beautiful parts of of Canadian um, ecology and and travel and tourism. And it just goes to show how close to home it can happen. And in British Columbia, we're dealing with things called um, atmospheric rivers, where there's actually seems to be like water accumulating massive water accumulations in the air that's then dumping like having a whole river dumped on land which is leading to landslides and flooding and there have been a couple of deaths in landslides a couple of weeks ago Um, but but people farmers animals have died and crops are gone whole towns have been evacuated and may never be habitable again when this is over we cannot deny that climate change is happening. Some people would have us think, well, you know, this is God's will. If God wants this to happen to creation, then God would, God provide, this is, you know, this is God's response or, or this is God's punishment on people because we didn't do what we were called to do. And my favorite word lately has been hooey. I don't believe that this is God's punishment. I believe that this is God's call to us to use the gifts that God has given us, the gifts of science, that that we can find ways to stop global warming, that we can find ways to, if we can't find ways to stop the rise of the oceans and the droughts that are happening 
across this country and in other places and the forest fires because it is so dry. Maybe we can find ways to work around those things. Or maybe we can begin simply by acknowledging they're happening. I know there has been some blowback on all of these people flying off to Glasgow, Scotland, um, a couple of weeks ago for the, for the, the climate um, summit. And the reality is that when you gather people together face to face, it's more difficult for people to, to lie. It's more difficult for them to say, oh yes, we'll do our part and wink, wink, nod, nod. They're not going to, which can happen over a phone call or through emails. But when you gather people together who acknowledge in front of others and make promises that the world can hold them to, there's, yes, of course, there's a chance that they may not live up to what they've promised, but there's a greater push and a greater expectation by the world that they will. I think it's ridiculous that we are worrying about corporations and finances when we are watching people's complete livelihoods disappear. I, you can trash me for this if you like, and there's lots I don't understand, but we, are, we know that fossil fuels are not good the way they stand for our climate. And yes, people will have to pivot and change and learn new ways of doing things and will have to be re-educated and find wonderful, good ways to make money so that they can have livelihoods. But the farmers in BC that right now are facing the fact that they have lost their farms, they have lost all of their livestock, they're there. They didn't ask for this, and they, didn't, they weren't contributing to the problem. We have to stop blaming and worrying about laying blame or calling people tree huggers or the, you know, being upset that people are green and demanding green. And we need to stop throwing names and accusing people across the aisle of being ridiculous in government. And we need to realize that we are all in this together. This country that we are in on this this prov there's this um, continent of North America, we need to maybe go back to some of the indigenous teachings that we've been learning so much about lately and thinking not in terms of North America being all about, you know, three sovereign countries who have, you know, money to make and treaties or, you know, NAFTA deals to, to, to encourage and to support and to implement but maybe going back to thinking about something like Turtle Island, that this is an island upon which God's creation is sacred. And the more we do to harm it, the less we have of it. It is terrifying for me as a priest to pray prayers for asking for good harvests for farmers, for the, the, the safety for people, knowing that there's nothing people can do if something comes up. I'd, I am fortunate I have never lived anywhere where we've had to evacuate. I can only imagine how difficult it must be. But for people like the people in Lytton, B.C., who had to evacuate and eventually lost almost everything in the forest fires and to come back and try to start again and then be evacuated again because of flooding, that is an irony that is beyond comprehension. Climate change is real, and we need to do something about it now. Not in 10 years, not in 5 years, but we need to do something now. And it needs to happen on every level, whether it's teaching our children or having our children teach us about recycling and, and the proper use of things. You know, maybe we need to decrease our consumption. We need to, to go back to the ways of of buying something and repairing it rather than simply throwing it in the, gar in the garbage at, a, at a, a dump and waiting for it to break down. Maybe we do need our corporations to stand up and say, we're going to lose money, but we're going to save the planet so our corporations will be long, around long enough to make money. If we have earthquakes that swallow them up or landslides that envelop them or forest fires that burn them out, or flooding that drowns them out, what good are those corporations going to be? Together, 
we have to be what God has called us to be, stewards of God's creation. It is our responsibility to take care of God's earth. And we need to begin now. For those who have already started, God bless you. And may you please teach the rest of us what we might do. For those who are feeling overwhelmed that the problems are too big, we cannot move a mountain if we simply push on it. But if every one of us picks up a pebble, that mountain can be moved faster than we ever believed. We can do this with God's help and with one another's help. But we need to do the work and we need to encourage our government leaders to do their work. We need them to stop acting like children, to stop fighting across the floor and to stand up and work together to save our world. I think at the end of the day, especially in this time of Advent, when we hear the story from Luke about the sun and the moon and the stars and the, the rising of the seas and all of these things are signs. They're signs that we need to be at to work. They aren't signs that God is angry. I don't believe they're signs that Jesus is coming for the second coming. I believe they're signs that God is saying to us, I, I placed you in the role of stewards. Now do your work. Fix the planet you have broken. And with God's help, we can. So today, I ask you to pray. I ask you to act, and even if you're feeling overwhelmed, do one thing or two small things that can get you started. And maybe, like a snowball running down a hill or rolling down a hill, our small efforts combined with others can be cre create something that can indeed allow climate change to be more the kinds of change that God would have for God's planet and not the kind of change that will ruin God's planet. Have a good day. Be good. Be gentle with this earth. And give thanks for what we have. God bless you all. I'll see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.